live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015 from Studio C. Brought to you by Cisco. Now your hosts, Stu Miniman and Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back. We are live at Oracle Open World in Moscone South. There's a lot going on. There's theaters, presentations, demos, all kind of madness. Come on by theCUBE. We'll be here all day, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We're psyched to be here. Joining this next segment by uh, Stu Miniman from Wikibond, esteemed research analyst who we are uh, happy to have on board, and Raghu Nambiar from Cisco Distinguished Engineer Data Center Business Group. Raghu, welcome. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. I mean, 40,000 people in, uh, the, in, 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 the San, in San Francisco uh, this week. I heard 55. 55. 55 okay. is the number I heard yesterday. Yeah. So, Raghu, you've excited been... Excited to be here, excited to be in the cube again. Absolutely, so we've been seeing you all over. So you've, you've kind of made the circuit like we've had. You've been at Strata Hadoop World, Big Data NYC, Splunk, you're going to IBM Insight. So it's been a busy show season. What are some of the lessons, learnings, things you've uh, come away from? Yeah, let me start with uh, the Splunk uh, conference uh, in Las Vegas a few weeks ago. Um, we have uh, 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 been a partner with the Splunk, and uh, and uh, one of the highlights of Splunk conference was uh, the Splunk 6.3 6 uh, performance. Uh, 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 it was a demonstrator on UCS, you know, 50% uh, uh, more performance than a previous generation of uh, uh, Splunk software. Right after that, we were at the uh, Strata Hadoop conference in New York. We talked about our integrated infrastructure for uh, big data. Uh, uh, then uh, last week at uh, SAP Tech, -Ed, we talk about uh, uh, Vora, the new highlight from uh, SAP, and uh, the project Benjamin, a joint collaboration between Cisco and uh, SAP. And uh, this week, uh, Oracle World, and later this week, uh, we'll be at uh, uh, IBM Insight Conference in Las Vegas, uh, you know, busy schedule, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, wow, so Cisco's partnering with everybody when it comes to this space. You know, yeah, I mean, like, we introduced to Cisco UCS five years ago, um, tremendous growth, a number one uh, uh, market share in x86 blades in five years. It's a significant uh, achievement. 47,000 uh, customers, 85% of all the Fortune 500 companies uh, uh, have been uh, invested in um, UCS. Yes, and the $3.5 billion rendered business in five years, you know, it's a, a lot of excitement. So, so Raghu, I, I think back to five years ago, server virtualization was real target for UCS. Uh, you know, we, we saw when server virtualization came out, I started buying boxes a little bit different, but UCS had just fundamentally in the architecture, there were things that you did to make sure really fit the performance, had the right kind of memory. But, you know, you're looking at uh, things like, uh, you know, uh, Splunk and all these analytics. Can you maybe you know talk a little bit about from an architectural standpoint? You know, what do you have to do in the products? What do you have to do configuration from that kind of architecture standpoint? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, from the very beginning, we focused on uh, two things. One is uh, programmable infrastructure, not only for like a, like a traditional uh, data management systems, but also for the emerging you know big data analytics, Internet of Things. Uh, 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 another one is our focus on uh, performance. Okay, so far we have uh, 110 world record benchmarks. If you look at the uh, uh, databases or virtualization, uh, you know, you know, or on enterprise applications, we are leading the space, beating our competition who has been in this business for uh, you know, several years. And uh, this week uh, we published industries. Uh, first uh, uh, TPC XHS benchmark at uh, 100 terabyte scale. TPC XHS benchmark is uh, the, the first and only so far uh, the benchmark for uh, uh, benchmarking uh, big data systems. Uh, and uh, and uh, we are able to demonstrate uh, you know the performance and price performance uh, over last one year. But uh, today it is exciting that we are the first vendor to publish uh, you know at a large scale, 100 terabyte scale. So benchmarking came up a little bit last night in the keynote. And, there, and, and Larry was throwing out, you know, we've got a benchmark, we're throwing it out for other people to benchmark. 
explain to people how you guys use benchmarking. Why is benchmarking important? How do you build your models around benchmarking? And, and how does that directly impact real applications and real customers? Sure, I mean, so if you look at the benchmarks in general, there are two consumers. One is the internal engineering team. Okay, I mean, whether it is Cisco or Oracle or other companies, they use industry standard benchmarks internally uh, to compare the new product with uh, the previous generation of product, whether it is hardware or software. So once uh, I know you get uh, good performance with industry standard benchmark, I mean, pretty sure that you know at, at real life you can expect similar performance uh, improvement. Second thing is the marketing team. How do you how do you showcase the uh, in a performance and price performance of your product compared to your competition? That is uh, you know second consumer of uh, industry standard benchmarks. When you talk about TPCXX benchmark, uh, you know um, that's the performance component as well as the price performance component, and the run rules are specified by the you know, TPC uh, specification. So um, at the end of the day, the, the customers are getting a uh, the performance and price performance point that can uh, fairly compared with uh, other benchmarks uh, out there. So, you know, when you look at these architectures, one of the feedback we get from practitioners is, you know, when, when they start with something under their desk, uh -huh. and then they want to scale it out, it's tough to do. I know Cisco, uh, Jim McHugh was on talking about this, Cisco Validated Designs for CBDs. Um, you're doing the same kind of thing for things like Splunk and Hadoop? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Cisco, CBD, so Cisco term, Cisco Validated Design, uh, it is, uh, a result of a lot of performance and um, scale testing internally. Okay, so basically, like uh, if a customer or a partner follows the guidelines in the Cisco validated design, we guarantee out of out of the box performance and scalability. I mean, a typical CBD development takes uh, several months, and some of the CBDs in the new areas could take uh, even even like you know a couple of quarters before the product is out. And uh, and uh, as I said, we stand behind the performance and the scalability of whatever is articulated in the CBDs. And we have CBDs for, you know, several CBDs for Oracle, okay, uh, from uh, Oracle Standalone to Oracle Rack with uh, enterprise uh, you know, storage partners. And we have uh, CBDs for uh, the, the big data for all the major Hadoop distributions and as well as Splunk. And so are you seeing are you seeing the bigger loads? I mean some loads that were never in a in a cloud in a cloud before really start to move and take advantage of some of this horsepower? You know, I mean uh, Cloud, cloud is a big part of our portfolio, okay, from the very beginning, from the web 2 dot world, Cisco has been providing uh, the routing and switching infrastructure for cloud. And uh, and uh, and uh, there are two, two technologies I want to highlight, one is ICF, inter-cloud fabric, you know, uh, you know, internet is uh, for connecting devices, inter-cloud fabric technology is connecting clouds. So maybe like, uh, I mean, uh, you can uh, extend your uh, uh, private cloud deployment to you know, public uh, clouds, or uh, you can have uh, deployments across multiple public clouds, and ICF can uh, and provide you a seamless interface. Uh, from an application per per perspective, uh, uh, it is transparent where the data or the application is residing. All right, so uh, please finish. Yeah, I mean, uh, second thing is, uh, you know, uh, 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 private cloud is uh, one thing, and we provide uh, our platform for public clouds as well. I mean, there are uh, several of our partners offering uh, Oracle, SAP, uh, you know, and other uh, enterprise applications as a service on uh, Cisco-powered clouds. And we have our own cloud, I mean, CIS, Cisco Information Server, and uh, that is another option for our customers, uh, you know, uh, to consider when uh, they are ready for extending the uh, 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 private cloud or uh, uh, extending the private cloud or going up uh, uh, full on a public cloud of, of offers. All right, C -c could you help, uh, help us understand how Cisco's intercloud fits into this whole discussion? And you know, you know, I know you're on the UCS team, but mm -hmm. what interaction did, do you have with, with the intercloud group? Yeah, I mean, intercloud is uh, again I mean, uh, 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 a set of uh, tools to extend your uh, you know, uh, private cloud offer to uh, uh, the public cloud, 
and also if you have a subscription across multiple uh, uh, public clouds, ICF will do uh, like a transparent uh, uh, access from application level as well as uh, the, the, the data tier level. It's so hybrid cloud, right? Everybody likes to talk about hybrid cloud. From your perspective, is it really hybrid cloud or is it hybrid applications that are leveraging different clouds? What's, this, what's, what's the real the reality between in hybrid cloud and the You know, the, the uh, application the landscape is becoming uh, really, really complex, okay? So um, every enterprise is uh, expected to have uh, a, 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 a private cloud as well as public cloud. Right. Hybrid is basically the connectivity, right? I mean, with ICF, uh, one of the unique thing is uh, you can uh, have a public private cloud offer and uh, based on your, uh, your uh, application demand, like a like week before Thanksgiving or big week before Christmas, when your system cannot handle the, 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 the burst traffic, you can seamlessly push the applications up on, on the cloud. From a user perspective, it is transparent. Right, but are, but are, there, appli is, but are there applications that are, that are kind of running concurrently in both instances at the same time, or is usually hybrid? People talk hybrid cloud, it's really more the sharing of data between essentially two applications that you have know, some you know, contingencies. Some of, these, some of these technologies emerging, okay? I mean, in some of the data management systems, you can have a, an instance in your private cloud and another instance your public cloud, okay, and do load balancing, okay? And the second one is uh, you have instance uh, either here or on the cloud, but the data is shared between um, uh, these applications. Right, right. So this is uh, like uh, this is this, this is emerging, okay. I mean, and uh, and, and we believe that uh, um, the hybrid cloud is uh, going to be um, uh, something of the future because every enterprise will have uh, you know deployments uh, in their in their in their own data center and subscription to one or more than one uh, public cloud offers. Yeah, Raghu, you bring up a, a real good trend that we're seeing a lot is mm -hmm. customers want to be able to access not only their own data, mm -hmm. but either there's community data or their data sources that they have. And, and heck, you know, we haven't even talked about IoT yet, mm -hmm. uh, because then you know, we're just going to have data everywhere and you know, what's at the edge, what do I pull in? Um, you know, how, how do you see kind of this dispersion of data, and of course Cisco you know, networks many of these pieces together. How does yeah, that I fit mean, into uh, your architecture? You know, internet is, IoT uh, uh, or IOE, Internet of Everything, is a big part of our portfolio. I mean, one uh, interesting observation is that if you look at the analytics today, 80 to 90% of the analytics are happening in your data center. Okay, that's going to change. By 2020, the prediction is that, uh, you know, 80% of the analytics are going to happen at the edge. Okay, um, like in certain cases, uh, you know, um, the, 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 the query will be pushed to the edge and processed uh, uh, in a distributed manner and only the result will be sent back to your application. Uh, I mean, this is going to be a, a game changer, uh, the, 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 the whole IoT-based applications. When you say when you talk about pushing to the edge, pushing the compute out to the because it's 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 kind of both both sides of the coin, right? Because more and more sensors, mm -hmm. smaller, less power, mm -hmm. more ubiquitous. Those won't have the necessarily the capability to do heavy lifting computing or heavy lifting right. the mm -hmm. data aggregation. Other things you'll be able to push the compute out to the edge with the data. So it's just it's still this constant good for Cisco yeah, yeah. moving data and moving compute all around. So we will have uh, I mean we already have and we will continue to innovate on uh, you know um, edge devices whether it's a router or a uh, or a server for uh, for for the edge having like more and more intelligence so that it can uh, you know process data locally before it is sent to uh, you know in your data center. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, Internet of Things is going to be ridiculous. We're already seeing it. Of course, everyone, the biggest Internet of Things, as some people like to say, is their Tesla. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's Tesla, already yeah. driving their world's biggest wearable. So what's coming up next? The, the, the pace of change in this industry is, is so ridiculous. You just said you've been to all these shows. As Merv Adrian likes to say uh, from Gardner, who was at, at uh, the Big Data NYC, you know, it's data from data and rest to data in motion. We're seeing Spark, the emergence of mm -hmm. Apache Spark. So what are you kind of excited about for the next six months? 
I mean, lot of lot of exciting things. Okay, I mean, I I don't know which one is uh, not exciting in this world. Okay, <laughs> so I mean, Spark is uh, of course uh, one of the one of the um, interesting technology, the ability to uh, run uh, things in memory. Uh, we will be announcing uh, the, the set of uh, reference architecture for Spark in the in in, in the near future. Uh, you know, another thing is uh, all the emerging uh, technologies on the storage space, uh, like uh, uh, like SSDs are becoming pretty 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 common in terms of uh, capacity and performance, of course. And the next generation NVMe, I mean, you know, that's going to be a game changer. With uh, SSDs and other technologies, it is like uh, bringing uh, bringing bring storage closer to the compute. With NVMe, it is pretty much bringing storage inside the compute you will not only have uh, the performance, but also have uh, the capacity. Uh, you know, if, uh, if you look at our B200 blades, that is one of the most popular uh, 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 compute uh, uh, system that we have. In a, when NVMe is a reality, we will be able to support, uh, you know, 16, 32, 64 uh, terabyte of storage capacity inside one single blade. So, Fragu, I, I've seen in your bio that, that you participate in some standards work. Mm -hmm. okay. And one of the things we've been looking at is kind of the open source initiatives, everything mm -hmm. Linux Foundation, we talked about Apache Spark. You know, how do you see, you know, we see it changing somewhat, you know, standards, you know, open source, it, obviously there's an interplay there. How mm -hmm. have you been see, seeing that changing and uh, you know, yeah, what do you I mean, see the role of standards going Yeah, forward? I mean, standards, uh, like my primary focus has been in this standard for uh, benchmarking um, uh, 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 systems. So if you look at the TPC XHS uh, benchmark standard, I was uh, the chairman of uh, the standards committee. Uh, the benchmark was a uh, joint effort between several companies. If you look at around, like most of these companies are part of the, the TPC XHS benchmark of standards uh, uh, development. And recently I got elected to chair uh, a new standards committee for IoT to develop a set of standards for the benchmarking Internet of Things. So that way, um, the various uh, products and technology can be uh, compared in terms of performance and per price performance, uh, you know, fairly. Um, open source, uh, you know, technologies are pretty interesting. I mean, Cisco is a big, uh, big supporter. Has been a big supporter for uh, for open source technologies. I think uh, it's a it's a, the power of the, the the community, right? I mean, we have seen that, you know, in a. Uh, Hadoop and the other uh, major uh, software distributions, the, 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 the speed in which uh, the feature set, uh, sets are implemented in the uh, in, uh, in open source uh, community versus the traditional solutions. I have a lot of respect for tra uh, traditional uh, solutions, but uh, the, the, with respect to speed, the, the, the community effort, nothing can beat that. Great. Well, Raghu, thanks for stopping by. We'll let you get back to your busy, uh, your busy conference schedule. <laughs> Give you the last word before we go out. What are you most excited? What have you seen here at Oracle that surprised you? Anything? So I think uh, you know uh, two things. One is uh, you know uh, all about uh, utility computing and the uh, digital transformation. We talked about that uh, you know la uh, last time. Right. A lot of exciting things happening. Good. All right. Well, Thank thanks you. for stopping by. Safe travels. I'm Jeff Frick. We are live at Oracle Open World. You're watching the Cube. Uh, stop by, we're on the exhibit floor. We'll be here at three days wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break, thanks. <laughs>